Perhaps I'm showing my age here, but how many of you remember the old Romper Room TV show? The show was targeted at preschoolers, and it came on the air about a decade before I was born. It's a fond part of my childhood memories. I'm not here to tell you about the romper stompers or the magic mirror, however, but there were two little characters that I remember quite clearly. Mr. Doobie taught us how we should act. He'd say things like, do be good, boys and girls, for your parents. And then there was Mr. Don't Be. He was around to show us what not to do. So for today's session on how to design and deliver a knockout presentation, I've broken up the material into two sections, do and don't. And I've further divided the information into what to do or not to do when you're designing your presentation and when you're delivering it. We'll start with Mr. Don't Be on what not to do. And I'll have these slides available for you on SlideShare after the presentation is over. You may want to take some notes as we go along here, though. First, let's talk about what not to do when designing your presentation. I know we've all been there, listening to a presenter drone on as bullet point after bullet point appear on a screen. Say no to death by PowerPoint. Use PowerPoint to augment your presentation, not to replace it. If your audience can fully understand your points by only reading your slides, why not just give them the handouts of your slides and go sit down? If you have to preface a slide by saying, I know you can't see this, but that means you probably crammed too much information onto one slide. I swear the image that you see here is real. It was a part of a presentation that I endured several years ago. There are literally hundreds of words on the slide. So what do you do if you need your audience to see something, perhaps numerical data, that is small even when on a big screen? Consider providing that information in handout form instead. Though we tend to see it less frequently now than when PowerPoint first came out, don't add sounds to your slides unless they truly help to prove your point. When's the last time this has happened to you? You're sitting through a presentation that's overloaded with acronyms, and you don't have a clue what those letters mean. Don't feed your audience alphabet soup. The key is to use words that your audience understands. So if you need to use an acronym, that can be just fine, as long as you explain what it means the first time you say it. I know that you were asked to give this presentation because you're knowledgeable about your topic. Be careful not to give your audience more than they can absorb in the time allotted, though. Typically, that would be no more than four to eight points for a 45-minute presentation. Don't always practice your presentation from a seated position. Stand up and move around just as you will when you actually deliver your presentation. Even practice using gestures so it'll feel natural when it's time for the real thing. Now we're moving into what not to do when delivering your presentation. On the day of your presentation, don't forget to stay hydrated, primarily with water. Avoid soda entirely. You don't want to belch into the microphone, do you? And limit your caffeine to your normal daily intake. You'll probably want to bring a glass or bottle of water with you to the podium as well. Avoid apologizing during your presentation, especially for not being prepared or for feeling nervous. You never want your audience to know that you failed to prepare. And if you feel nervous and tell your audience about it, they'll instantly be looking for signs of your nerves. If you don't mention it at all, it's likely that your audience won't even notice. You were chosen to be a conference speaker because you're knowledgeable. No need to get super humble and dismiss your achievements. Now, on the other hand, you don't need to overstate your credentials either. While some humor in business presentations is fine, be extremely careful not to offend your audience with inappropriate humor. The best advice I ever received about humor is this. If you have to look around before you tell a joke, it's probably not appropriate. Your slide should enhance, not replace, the spoken part of your presentation. Reading your slides to your audience is a quick way to put them to sleep. It seems to be human nature to turn and face your slides when you're speaking. However, when you do this, you're putting your back to your audience and to your podium microphone. And you can't keep eye contact with your eyes facing away from your audience. By turning to face your slides, your audience can no longer see your face, and you can no longer see their reactions. They probably can't even hear you very well anymore either. Face forward the whole time. And now for our last don't. Remember that iconic scene in The Wizard of Oz when Toto pulled back the curtain, allowing Dorothy and friends to see that the wizard was just a man after all? Never let people see behind your curtain. 
And what I mean by this is don't show anything on your projector screen other than the presentation mode of your slides or software that you're demoing to us. We should never see you navigating to where you'll find your PowerPoint file, or really anything in PowerPoint other than the full screen version of your slides. This also means to remember to turn off all notifications that may pop up on your screen during your presentation, primarily things like email, Google Hangouts, and Skype notifications. Now let's move on to the do's. What should you do when designing and delivering your presentation? Again, we'll start with designing your presentation. I once heard this called everyone's favorite radio station, WIIFM. What does WIIFM stand for? Remember, I don't want to feed you alphabet soup here. It stands for what's in it for me. Always, always, always spend time determining what from your presentation will benefit your audience. If you can't come up with it, guess what? You probably shouldn't be talking with them as it'll be a waste of their time. I actually like to write out WIIFM and keep it visible, perhaps on a post-it note when I'm designing the presentation, so it's always top of mind for me. Whenever possible, connect with at least a few of your audience members before you speak. Even if you can't get in touch a week or so ahead of time, chat with conference attendees over break or between sessions. Ask them for input or examples, and then share those when you speak. About a century ago, newspaper editor Arthur Brisbane first urged his staff to use a picture. It's worth a thousand words. I'm sure you've heard that before. Now, back in the olden days, like five years ago, it was common to use cartoony clip art in presentations. Heck, Microsoft even made it easy for us by bundling clip art with PowerPoint and Word. But now it's easy to find great photos and images. I tend to use a site called compfight.com to find images. This site will allow me to find images that are licensed in a way that I don't infringe on anyone's copyright. And it's usually a good idea to save the URL of the image in your slide notes in case you need to go back to it later and to provide credit for the photographer. If part of your presentation includes showing a video clip, be sure to preload it so that you can show it immediately and not have the dreaded buffering icon appear instead. Where's the best place to find great presentations to emulate? I found them at TED Talks. TED began in 1984 as a conference where technology, entertainment, and design converged, and today it covers almost all topics, from science to business to global issues, in more than 110 languages. My favorite speaker who can be found in TED Talks is Nancy Duarte. From her, I have learned an enormous amount, primarily in the area of slide design and speech structure. If you refer to websites or blogs in your presentation, create a set of social bookmarks for your audience so that they can go to one URL to find all of your links and not spend time during your presentation attempting to furiously scribble down all the addresses. I now tend to use Pinterest for my social bookmarks. Let your audience know early in your presentation where they can find all the links. Know how to use the technology that you're going to be using inside and out. Practice hooking up all the cords and cables and know how long it will take you to do that. Know how to easily blacken the screen during your presentation when slides are not needed. In PowerPoint, simply press B to blacken the screen and then any other key to bring the slides back up. Do you have something new with you today? Well, in front of your audience is not the place to learn how to use it. Yes, this sounds kind of doom and gloom, but plan for your technology to fail. Always have a hard copy of your notes for your presentation, just in case you can't rely on the slide to jog your memory for what you meant to say. Save your presentation as a PowerPoint and as a PDF and store it on your computer and on a USB drive. Yes, it's like wearing a belt with suspenders twice, and I'm okay with that. Heck, I'll even keep mine in the cloud as well. And finally, let's continue with how to best deliver your presentation. Even if you don't feel confident, it's important that you appear confident to your audience. How? First off, don't even mention to your audience about a lack of confidence. Just stand straight and tall. Take a deep breath in and a long, slow breath out. Find a friendly face or two in the audience and begin. Someone in your audience will almost always ask, can I get a copy of your slides? Upload your slides to SlideShare or a similar site at least a day before your presentation if you want your audience and people who don't even see your presentation live to have access to them. 
You can choose to keep the slides private until just before or just after the presentation if you wish. While you don't have to act like someone you're not, show a range of your own natural emotions while speaking. Doing so will make you much more relatable to your audience. If you make a promise, for example, to provide more information on a certain topic later in your presentation, be sure to deliver on that promise. Dress appropriately. Now, what does that mean? I usually like to be dressed at least as nicely as most of my audience, or even just a little bit more nicely if it's possible. If your audience is wearing business casual, a suit jacket would probably be fine. But if they're in more casual clothes, a suit jacket might be too formal. When in doubt, ask the organizer of the conference what the expected attire is. Oh, and always remember to take your name badge off, especially if it's on a lanyard. It's just distracting. Arrive with your speaker's toolkit in tip-top order. I think I almost got a hug from the conference room tech guy at my last speaking event because I had everything I needed with me and more. So what's in mine? Here's what I typically carry with me. My computer and power cord, a power strip with at least a six foot extension, external speakers with their power cord just in case there's no sound system attached to the projector, a 3.5 millimeter cord to attach the speakers to the computer. Even if I have my Bluetooth enabled computer and speakers with me, I like using the cord as a backup. A projector, if I know that there isn't one for me on site. A presentation remote, so I don't have to stay tied to my keyboard. An extra set of batteries for anything that uses batteries, whether it's speakers or the remote. Hard candy or throat lozenges, in case your throat gets scratchy and then more business cards than I think I could possibly need. Plan your presentation so that you can expand or contract it as needed. Even though you may have been told you have 45 minutes, you may discover that the business portion of the meeting has run long and you end up with just 30 minutes. Make no mention of shortening your presentation to your audience. Just do it gracefully. Depending on what your content is, you may want to suggest that your audience members take some notes. At the very least, encourage them to jot down any questions they have so they can ask you later. Anticipate what some of your questions might be and prepare answers for them. Lead into the Q&A session with, before I close, let's hear questions from two or three people. If no questions come from the audience, you may want to say something like, one question I often hear is, and this will help avoid that dreaded dead air after you ask for questions. I've even been known to plant some anticipated questions in the audience, just in case there are no questions raised right away. If you do get questions from an audience member, always repeat the question before answering. This helps in two ways. It allows the rest of the audience to hear the question more clearly, and it allows you a chance to rephrase it and formulate your response. After you've answered a question, be sure to ask the audience member something like, is that the kind of information you were looking for? before you move on to the next question. Put your contact information on your last slide and leave this slide up until you finish the presentation completely. And then, after you've wrapped up the question and answer portion, if you have one, come back to your audience with your knockout punch. How? You have several choices. You could challenge your audience to take what you've shared and try it themselves. You could review your key points. You could end with a meaningful quotation. Or maybe you could end with one more thing like Steve Jobs always used to do, but never end with any questions. You've already taken care of that part. If I had to pick from all the do's and don'ts that I've shared today, which one was the single most important, which one do you think it would be? Why don't you jot down your thought on that? W-I-I-F-M. You simply must be able to state clearly why your audience should care about your topic. If you can't do that, you'll never gain and keep their attention. However, once you can articulate what's in it for them, you're on your way to a knockout presentation.